Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. June 17th, John Elliott. John Elliott dreamed of taking the gospel to nearby Native Americans. On this day, in 1670, John Elliott established a church at Magdapog and preached to them, a little haltingly maybe, in their own language. A fundamental Puritan tenet held that believers ought to be able to read and interpret the Bible for themselves. So while he did his full time pastor's job, Elliot managed to devise an Algonquin grammar so their language could be written, and then he translated the Old and New Testaments into Algonquin. Here's how the Church for Native Americans got started. When dreams are delayed, don't give up. God will come through. One crisp October day in 1646, John Elliot and his friends tramped four miles from his house toward the Indian village on Nanantum Hill. When the Puritans had fled religious persecution in England to establish a church in the New World, they also committed to serve as missionaries to the natives. And John had often dreamed about bringing the truth of the gospel to them. But it had taken more than 15 years for John to establish his own home and learn the natives' language. Finally, today, the God-given dream would happen. Isaiah 46.10 says, And don't forget the many times I clearly told you what was going to happen in the future. For I am God, I only, and there is no other like me who can tell you what is going to happen. All I say will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. Elliot and his friends reached the principal wigwam, and several chief men of the village welcomed the visitors in English. Elliot was honored by how graciously they used the few words of English they knew. Today would test how well he could communicate in their language. He stepped into the gloom of a large square room where multiple fires burned. There were vents through the roof, but pungent smoke filled the air. Men, women, and children lined the walls. What a glorious sight. John fought back emotion so he could speak, and he spoke. Occasionally, he needed the help of an interpreter, but it was obvious his audience wanted to hear the words from his own mouth so he did his best. He explained what God considered to be right and wrong. Then he showed how no one could behave perfectly every single day. Then he said that Jesus was the only way to recover from this hopeless inability to please God. The people were attentive, and John taught for an hour and a half. Finally, he asked if anyone had questions. A man stood up and said, how may we come to know Jesus Christ? John explained that the story of Jesus was in the Bible. But since the Indians couldn't read English words, they should meditate on what he had told them because it was from God's book. Do this much and often, said John. He encouraged them to think about it when they lay on their mats in their wigwams, and when they went into the fields, and when they walked in the woods. Then he told them to pray and say, Lord, make me to know Jesus Christ, for I know him not. Another man said he had tried to pray, but his friend said God couldn't understand Indian prayers. John explained that God made all men, English and Indian. Since he had made them, he could understand them. Another man stood and said, Were Englishmen ever this ignorant of God and Jesus Christ as they were? John perceived the root of the question. There are two sorts of Englishmen. Some are bad and live wickedly, said John. These kinds of Englishmen didn't know Jesus. But there were a second sort of Englishmen who turned away from wrong behavior and looked to Jesus for help. They are good men now, said John, 
and know Christ and love Christ and pray to Christ. More than three hours passed. John asked the Indians if they were weary, but they wanted to hear more. John thought it would be good to leave them with a hunger for spiritual things, so he stopped, but promised to come back again. As John walked home, he praised God that his dream to teach the natives of the new world was finally beginning to unfold. What dream has God given you? When dreams are delayed, don't give up. God will come through. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.